Greetings. So we've gotten through the first couple of chapters of the textbook and we're now have slingshotted ourselves forward to chapter 6 section 1 and here we're going to talk about inverse functions and what they mean. Now if you think about a function from algebra it basically says for every single input or number on the x-axis there is exactly one number on the y-axis. And that's exactly what we see here. If you pick any point on the x-axis, I can go either up, or in the case of the number 4, I would go down, and I can see a point on the graph which would correspond to a y value. And what I have done here is I have graphed the function sine x. And this demonstrates its relationship to the real numbers, or the, what we refer to as radian measure. So if we think about one radian, or the complete circle being two pi radians, which is around a little more than six, you see that this graph of the sine x begins at zero, and as x increases, meaning going to our right, we're going to watch the curve go up, the value of the sine increases till it maxes out, and this is approximately 90 degrees, which is also 1.57 radians. If we continue around the unit circle, we get to pi, 3.14, and the sine of pi is zero. As we continue about the circle to 3 pi over 2, the sine takes on a value of negative 1, and then as we come back to 2 pi, which is approximately 6.28, we begin the cycle all over. Now, what happens here, though, is we want to look at what's called the inverse function. If I give you a value of sine, let's say I tell you the sine that I have is 1 half. The question is, what is the angle that produces a sine value of 1 half? So you would look at the 1 half value here, and you go to either to the left or to the right, and you want to find a spot on the curve and read down. And you see you get 1 half right here at approximately the number 1 half. Uh, or actually, uh, it's actually closer, yeah, about half-half, right there. If you wanted to have the sine value of 1, you come up here, which is a y value, and you look either left or right, and you come to where you get on the curve, and we would come down to 1.57. The problem with inverse functions is you notice if I come all the way across, there are actually lots of locations where the sine curve is at positive one half. But your calculator has to give you an answer and it doesn't know which answer to give. So we limit the scope of what we're going to look at when we do inverse trig functions. And let me show you what we do. In order to look at the inverse trig function, we want every x value to have a single y value but also we want every single y value to have exactly one x value. Now let's look at what this blue piece of the sine curve would do. So for x it says no problem. I can go from about a negative 1.57 up to 1.57 or from negative 90 degrees to 90 degrees and in doing so, the sine takes on every possible y value it can possibly have from negative 1 all the way up to 1. So if you pick any number between negative 1 and 1 and type it into your calculator, now make sure your calculator's in radians, and I'm going to do one right here. I have my calculator out, and I'm going to type in the number for the real number, I'm going to do the inverse sine of negative 0.8. So type in the inverse sine of negative 0.8 on your calculator and hit enter. 
And if you do this in radian mode, let's take a look at what our answer is going to be. And if we do this, I see the answer is about negative 0.92. So if I come down here to about a negative 0.8 and I look over to the blue part of the graph, we are at about um, the real number is almost negative 1 because this is negative 1 right here. So notice if I'm at a negative 0.8, my value is just short of being negative 1. If I type in the inverse sign of 0.8, I get almost 1. I get 0.92. So if I come over here to half, 0 0.6, 0 0.7, 0 0.8, and I come over to look for the y value, here it is. It's on the blue curve right here, and I look down, and there's the x number that would have gotten me up here. Now why this is important is for the following reason. We're about to start solving problems where you are going to want to take the inverse sign of an angle, and it's going to give you an output. And you need to be aware that the answers your calculator will give you will only be from negative 90 degrees to positive 90 degrees. Even if the triangle you're dealing with really had a radian measure of 2, the calculator cannot tell you that. Because if it did, it would mean that my inverse function would be this blue curve, and I would, the calculator would say, oh, do I give you this number for a possible x value at 2, or do I come over here and go, oh, it's really at 1. The calculator would not know which one of these to determine, so it has to limit what its answers are, and we're going to have to be smart enough to know when we need to adjust an answer that our calculator provides to us. And for most of the trig functions, you're going to find the inverse will always, and matter of fact, this is true for the three basic functions, not necessarily the reciprocal functions, are all going to want to include 0 and grow from 0. So the sign grew from 0 by going in both the positive and the negative direction. And it goes, again, from negative 90 degrees to positive 90 degrees. I hope this helps you understand a little bit about inverse trigonometric functions.